Welcome everybody, I'm Keith, and this is 2A Cops, Cops Supporting Gun Rights. In this episode, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the recent uh, arm brace rule, which you guys have all heard about. But I wanna give you what the street cops perspective is on this, and also why we're saying don't register. And if you're one of those rule followers, why you wanna wait all 120 days. Welcome guys. All right, so first off, there's a lot of new people to the channel. Uh, just so you know, I am just full disclosure. I am not currently a police officer. I am a retired 30 year police officer, recently retired. And I do train cops all over the country. In fact, I do train cops all over the world. I just recently came back from New Zealand uh, this week where I was training police officers over there. Uh, Training cops every single week gives me a chance to talk to them uh, at a pretty deep level. And a lot of things really haven't changed about their views about gun control. And I can tell you right now, none of them are happy about this arm brace rule. In fact, uh, I haven't met one cop that says they would even do anything about it. In fact, all of the cops that I've run into have said that they are not going to register their arm braced pistol. I think you should pay attention to what they're doing because obviously they're in the know. I mean, if you're not a cop, obviously you're wondering what, what are all the cops going to do? What are they? I mean, some of you probably don't care, but I know there are some people that are rule followers and are worried about what to do and feel like they're in, in limbo. And I just want to give you a couple points to think about with this. Now, the 2023 arm brace rule essentially makes it, uh, Ill, basically makes it, if you have a uh, pistol brace or a braced pistol, it makes it an SBR. So, to be clear, my nice little PWS arm brace here, now the ATF, and I bought this lawfully and nobody had issues with it. I bought it lawfully. I bought it in a gun store. And all of a sudden the ATF has decided that this is illegal, okay? Now we have a problem with that. I'll tell you why we have a problem with it. It, if um, ATF is a law enforcement agency, that's like the California Highway Patrol saying, hey, it's illegal for you to have this now. Well, they don't make the laws. And in fact, it's been pretty clear that they don't make the laws. Uh, recently, the Fifth Circuit Court um, made a decision in the bump stock case. And with that bump stock case, we all know that uh, essentially uh, Trump, who I'm not sure why everybody loves Trump, because he's one of the most anti-gun people out there, uh, Trump came out and uh, told the ATF to make bump stocks illegal, which they can't. It went to court and the Fifth Circuit came out and ruled that bump stocks are lawful and you can all have bump stocks again. Now, it only affects people in the Fifth Circuit. Uh, if you're in the Ninth Circuit or the Fourth Circuit, it may not help you, but what the Fifth Circuit does, does have an impact on all the other circuit courts. And uh, I doubt it's going to go to the Supreme Court. If it does go to the Supreme Court, they're just going to bounce it back down and say, follow the Bruin case, which brings us to our next one, the Bruin case. If you haven't read the Bruin case, I know all of you know that the Bruin case was a great case decided by the Supreme Court last year that gave it really opened up our gun rights. But if you want to feel really good about your gun rights and where we're going in, in, in the direction of gun rights overall, Go read what the justice had to say when he wrote that uh, when he wrote that decision. It'll make you feel pretty good. It's pretty clear that assault weapons bans, magazine bans, all that kind of stuff is going out the window. But most importantly, is a case also decided by the Supreme Court last year, West Virginia versus EPA. And in that, West Virginia sued the EPA, saying uh, that they're not, that they're a regulatory that they're an agency of the government. They're not Congress. Only Congress can make laws and the Supreme Court decided in their favor. Now, it's troublesome to me that the ATF has decided they wanna put this rule down when uh, uh, case law is specifically on your side, that they can't do this, especially when you lawfully bought that pistol and now they say you can't have it, and if you don't register it, you're a felon. It raises a lot of alarm bells for me. Number one, it's very clear. You have three case law decisions that specifically overrule what the, what the ATF is doing. Now, lawsuits have already been filed. This is why we think you should wait the full 120 days. I don't think you should do it at all. I don't think you should register whatsoever. Um, 
I think if you're a rule follower, we'll tell you how you can take care of that in the end. Uh, but clearly, I think that there's going to be a TRO issued, which is a temporary restraining order. And the restraining order is basically going to tell the ATF, back down from what you're doing, and it's going to sit until it finally goes to court. When it finally goes to court, I have no doubt, there's no way that it's going to hold uh, mustard in federal court and it's going to get turned down. Now, I'm not a lawyer. If you want legal advice, go talk to your lawyer. But I can tell you... Uh, there, the case law is on our side and we're good to go. Now, as for what street cops think, I've easily talked to a thousand cops since this has come in. Uh, those cops, I mean, obviously it's been in a very large classroom and I've just been like, hey, what do you think about this when we come back from a break? It's interesting what they have to say. And these are cops from all over the country, from east to west, okay? Uh, funny, the most vehemently opposed to this, the most voiceful people are California cops because they've seen government so out of control that you, you want to see somebody hates the government, go talk to a California cop, which just so happens to be where I was a cop. Uh, we ignore a lot of gun laws. Uh, in fact, most gun laws. Uh, Matt and I have talked at length about that. Uh, but I can tell you none of us are on this side. So I would wait. If you're a rule follower, I would not. Number one, I think you should never let the government know what you have. Uh, the government, the stuff that they're pulling right now is an example. I teach uh, investigative procedures and the stuff that the FBI is doing right now is stuff that we tell you not to do in investigative procedure, yet they're just going out and doing it with no recourse whatsoever. That should scare the shit out of everybody here. Um, if they were, if ATF and the FBI were a local police agency, they would have been taken under the feder under a federal consent decree and put under control of the federal government to stop what they're doing. But yet, it's okay for them, I guess, right? Um, but with that, look, none of us are happy about it. We don't like it. I think you should wait. Uh, I, if you wait the full 120 days before you do anything, then look, man, uh, I think this thing will be resolved before then. I would not register. I don't trust what they're doing. It's not based on solid law. However, if you're a rule follower, just disassemble your pistol and disassemble it, put it away and wait for it to all get resolved because it will get resolved at some point and it'll be in your favor. So again, I'm not a lawyer. Go talk to your lawyer if you need legal advice, but I am a guy that's been around the block and seen a lot of gun control measures fail. Uh, haven't seen a lot of them succeed. So that's it. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, follow us. We have a lot of good content that comes out every day. And do me a favor, if you hate gun control, hit that like button. Uh, it lets the algorithm know that we're important and people should listen to our message. So that's all I've got for now. You take care, stay safe.